right, next, let's work on, in the content, unit one, 1.11, Enlightenment Classical Art. Excellent, right click on your quiz and open that in a new tab. Get that started. And size it down so you can see your questions in your scroll bar still. And then you can go ahead and size down your other window so you'll be able to see both. Perfect, and then let's just go ahead and get started on make sure, yep, we're at the beginning. Perfect. Excellent. Lesson introduction, enlightenment, neoclassical art. In the second half of the 18, oops, never let Mrs. Jarrell forget to read the questions. That's an important test taking strategy. What is a neoclassical characteristic of Thomas Jefferson's Monticello? Is it Monticello is constructed with many fanciful details on the exterior and interior? Or that Monticello contains columns, porticos, and domes used in Roman architecture? Or Monticello is based on a complex asymmetric plan? Or Monticello includes features inspired by medieval cathedrals? What's your hypothesis? Question two, how was David's Oath of the Horatii inspired by classical Greek and Roman art? Is it the figures are modeled after classical sculpture? The vibrant colors are similar to those of ancient frescoes? The story that it tells focuses on emotion rather than reason? Or the figures are posed in distorted positions for added drama? Question three, what is the true statement about neoclassical painting as seen in Jean, or excuse me, Jacques-Louis David's Oath of Horatii? Is it was made by using loose energetic breaststrokes? Its details are elaborate and ornate. It inspired patriotism and taught moral values, or its figures were modeled after Egyptian sculpture. There we go. In the second half of the 18th century, a new artistic style known as neoclassicism supplanted Rococo. Neoclassical artists and architects abandoned the extreme ornamentation of the Rococo style in favor of simpler, cleaner lines in their paintings and their buildings. The art and philosophy of ancient Greece and Rome served as a template for this new movement. Here's Thomas Jefferson based the design of this Virginia Hall Monticello on neoclassical principles. Goal for the lesson, identify ways neoclassical artists were inspired by classical art, identify distinguishing characteristics of neoclassical art, identify ways that neoclassical artists were inspired by classical art, identify how works of neoclassical art and architecture reflect the beliefs of their time and place. From ornate to austere. Starting around the year 1760, the Rococo movement in art and architecture began to lose its luster. Prominent figures of the day, including the Enlightenment author Voltaire, criticized the Rococo style as irrational, frivolous, and even decadent. Remember, Enlightenment is the area in the eight era in the 18th century when thinkers valued logic, reason, and scientific method. Voltaire. In France, Rococo was identified with the callous aristocracy and the unpopular monarch Louis XVI. Artists renounced the flamboyant Rococo style and created a less intricate, more realistic style that came to be called neoclassical. During the same time period, the emerging scene of archaeology brought to light ancient Greek and Roman ruins, including those of Pompeii. Neoclassical painters, sculptors, and architects took inspiration not only from excavated artifacts, but also from the surviving narratives and moral values of those cultures. Jacques-Louis David was born to a wealthy Parisian family in 1748. He received the finest education available with the hope that, like his uncles, he would become a successful architect. 
David, however, showed an aptitude for art early on and prevailed on his family to let him pursue his passion. He studied painting at the Royal Academy in Paris and then spent five years at the French Academy in Rome, where he marveled at the works of the Italian masters, above all, Raphael. David also loved exploring the ruins of ancient Rome and Pompeii. Those experiences in Italy led David to abandon the prevailing Rococo style and embrace the emerging neoclassical approach to painting. Oath of Horatii Back in Paris, David's reputation was secured with the 1784 unveiling of Oath of Horatii. He soon found himself caught up in the tumult of the French Revolution, and thereafter, through various changes of government, David produced many paintings with patriotic themes. David believed that the purpose of art was to teach moral behavior. His paintings were meant to inspire courage, duty, and loyalty to the state. In Oath of Horatii, David depicts a pivotal moment in the ancient war between the city-states of Rome and Alba. Both sides had agreed to settle the conflict by sending their three best warriors to fight to the death. Jacques-Louis David created paintings with a moral message that were meant to inspire courage, duty, and loyalty to the state. The subject of this painting is a pivotal moment in a war between the ancient city-states of Rome and Alba. The story was well known in France during David's time, having been the subject of a popular stage play. Parisians who viewed the painting would have instantly understood the setting, the theme, and the message behind it. Both Rome and Alma agreed to settle the conflict by each having their three best warriors fight to the death. The Romans chose three sons of Horus, known as the Horatii. David depicts Horus, the proud father holding his son's swords high as the young men enthusiastically pledge their allegiance to Rome and their willingness to die in service to their city. The rigid poses of their bodies emphasize heroism. The three women in the painting communicate in an entirely different set of emotions. The mother of the Horatii in the background comforts two of her grandchildren and laments the impending battle. The younger women in the foreground also have much to lose. One woman is married to one of the three Horatii and the other, Horace's daughter, is engaged to one of the Alban warriors. The soft curves of the women's bodies help communicate the women's love of family and their sorrow. Neoclassical Characteristics Recall that Rococo paintings are characterized by pastel color themes, delicate brushwork, and fanciful settings and subjects? In Oath of Horatii, David used a subdued palette so the colors do not overshadow the message of the painting. In clear contrast to the breezy texture of Rococo brushwork, David's, or I should say David's, brush strokes are nearly imperceptible so that they do not distract from the realistic quality of the figures. Other neoclassical characteristics include the setting and poses of the figures. The setting is reminiscent of classical and high renaissance paintings that employed symmetrical elements and one-point perspective. The poses of the figures reflect the neoclassical view that only women were allowed to express emotion. Men were expected to be stoic. What neoclassical elements do you see in Oath of Horatii? Rationality and Reason Rule Neoclassical artists weren't the first to return to the reason and rational thought of classical Greece and Rome, and they haven't been the last. Since antiquity, the pendulum has swung either toward rationality and reason or toward emotion. After the emotional symbolism of medieval art, Renaissance artists revived the order of harmony of classical times. Even during the dramatic Baroque period, Nicolas Poussin created highly organized, classically inspired narrative landscapes. Click through the gallery of artworks by a classical Roman artist, a Renaissance artist, a French Baroque artist, and a French neoclassical artist. What commonalities do you see? All of the artworks 
reflect order, harmony, and idealism in the representations of the figures and their details. Order, harmony, idealism, okay? Classical. Neoclassical influence in America. During the latter half of the 18th century, the Enlightenment ideals and reverence for the ancient world that inspired European neoclassicists found a warm reception in the soon-to-be independent United States. Thomas Jefferson, who contributed so much to the groundwork of American government, was also a skilled architect. When formulating his designs, Jefferson embraced the Palladian style, named for the Italian Renaissance builder Andrea Palladio whose work reflected a strong Roman and Greek influence. Why do you suppose Jefferson and other American neoclassic, neoclassical architects would want to associate American buildings and further American society with the ideas of classical Greece and Rome? Democracy in classical Greece and the Roman Republic provided a model for the American leaders. Americans borrowed many governmental terms from the Romans and based designs for many government buildings on classical designs. Jefferson's Monticello. Constructed on Jefferson's plantation home in Charlottesville, Virginia, which Jefferson named Monticello, began in 1769 before the American Revolution. Construction continued with se several modifications to the original plans. While Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence and then served as a legislator, governor of Virginia, U.S. ambassador to France, secretary of state, vice president, and president for two terms. The house was completed in 1809. Characteristics of Neoclassical Architecture Some important hallmarks of neoclassical architecture include an emphasis on symmetrical designs and the use of columns, porticos, and domes, all common features of Roman temples and all present in Monticello. The portico is a small porch covered by a roof that is supported by columns. Jefferson's homage to the almost 2,000-year-old Roman Parthenon, one of the most famous surviving temples from classical times and a masterpiece of engineering, is unmistakable. And notice the similarities. We have a dome on each and the portico on each. Columns. They're both symmetrical. All right, let's see if we can answer the questions on the test. So what is a neoclassical characteristic of, characteristic of Thomas Jefferson's Monticello? Monticello is constructed with many fanciful details. No, I never talked about that. Monticello contains columns, porticos, and domes. Yeah. Question two. Did we already answer that one? How was David's Oath of Horatii inspired by classical Greek and Roman art? Is it the figures are modeled after classical sculpture? The vibrant colors are similar to those of ancient frescoes. The story that it tells focuses on emotion rather than reason, or the figures are posed in distorted positions for added drama. The answer is the figures are modeled after classical sculpture. And what is a true statement about neoclassical painting as seen in Jacques Louis David's Oath of Horatii? It was made by using loose energetic brush strokes. Its details are elaborate and ornate. It inspired patriotism and taught moral values, or its figures were modeled after Egyptian sculpture. The answer is it inspired patriotism and taught moral values. Good job.